The second thing that people have been talking to me about lately has been what I have learned from being in a band for about three years now, three and a half years, somewhat around there. So, a little bit of background. Before I was in the Saints, I lived in Pennsylvania, um, and I was going to high school, and I took vocal lessons, and I was in cheerleading and a bunch of other things. I did high school band, high school chorus, um, did a lot of stuff with the music department in high school. Theater and show choir, um, I did vocal jazz for a little bit, thing. Um, but I did do a couple things by myself. I was in like a band with my friend Becca and um, we actually wrote a really good song which we got to perform but nothing too serious there. Um, and so I never had been in like a rock band before. In fact, a lot of my friends probably didn't even know that that's the music I listened to. Um, so uh, yeah, I was kind of a different person back then. Um, I was not as uh, open about like my musical tastes. I mean, I did have a pretty big phase where I liked the Jonas Brothers and Hannah Montana and so that's I think was what a lot of people thought that I listened to in high school but it really started to switch with like Barlow Girl and then getting into Firefly who's still one of like my all-time favorite bands. I love them. I can't wait for the chance to actually play a show with them although I think if I meet Dawn I might actually pass out because she's like my singing idol. I love her. Um, and yeah so I had like zero experience of being in a band, um, but I knew it was something I really wanted to do because we did a talent show and there was um, me and my friend Sam uh, put together like a band and just played one of my favorite Barlow Girl songs and it was so much fun working with other musicians and it's when we, really when I realized that I didn't want to do solo music career. Um, that I am much more comfortable on stage when I have a band with me and I just that's where I'm in my element um, And so I told everybody when I left for college I was going to either start a band or be in a band So when I got out here, I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but we're gonna fake it till we make it and um, I soon after auditioned for the Saints and um, when I got into the Saints I kind of had like the distorted view that everyone I guess has where like you immediately are gonna like start touring and gonna play all these awesome shows where there's a lot of people there and it's gonna be so much fun and then you realize how much work it is to be in a band so my first thing that I realized and learned was get used to doing a lot of stuff yourself um, especially when you are starting out. Uh, being in a band is stressful. <laughs> it is not easy. You're making five very different people work together on something that is very personal. So writing music gets very touchy sometimes um, and is a very hard thing. We really haven't had like major problems with that in our band, but I can definitely see it's, it's really hard to take criticism from somebody on a song that you've written and that's so personal and in my band it's never been a problem the guys are really good at being respectful of things that you've written and not ever being like that sucks when you're like I've spent like hours and hours and hours writing this yay um, so we have pretty nice um, song sessions but when you get into the upper realms of the music industry, it is not so nice, and lollipops and rainbows, um, especially depending on the record label. Um, I'm also a marketing music business major, so I study this stuff, <laughs> but it is, I mean, if you want to be a professional songwriter, you're going to write thousands of songs, and probably three or four of them will be hits. Um, that's the reality of it, so get used to taking rejection. And, um, but it was a different experience than just writing songs myself, on my own, playing them myself. Um, especially because in the band I'm just a vocalist, and I don't play any other instruments, and so it's really hard when you're a vocalist to write a song and not 
write the instrumental part because I want the boys to write their own part and to put their own part into the song so it's collectively the band song and not just mine um, but it's really hard to teach them the songs and you don't know the chords so yeah and it's been really hard because my piano is at home so <laughs> I can't even like flesh out somewhat chords to help them get a basis of it um, so that's challenging also you know you have to learn how to do booking which booking is a really hard thing to start because it's all who you know and when you don't know anyone it's challenging and so the next realization was when you start playing shows expect like maybe five people to be there and if it's a show you have to pay to get in there just might be other bands there and that's about it but that's just where you have to start and just I always say five or fifty I'm gonna play it a hundred percent because I don't know who's really watching um, and because I always have more fun when I put my all into it so it's what I want to do um, and so I really enjoy doing it that way um, another thing I realized very quickly is being around a lot of people and you know shaking hands and being interactive with people and I'm a very huggy person hand sanitizer is about the biggest thing that I need to bring to a show because I undoubtedly get sick every time that we play a show and I'm almost positive it's because I don't wash my hands enough after shaking people's hands and that sounds so weird but I don't know I just get sick and I go to school in the college university setting and I never really get sick that much it's just I don't know what it is but I always get sick and so especially when we've played like multiple shows after each other I think it's the lack of sleep combined with being around so many people and being sweaty and that exchange and all of that fun stuff so hand sanitizer was an important lesson to learn um, I also learned that there are a lot of dirty rotten sneaky people in the music industry who like to take advantage of you um, and we just had an experience with that and it never is a good feeling to get taken advantage of and when you realize that you put your all into this and that somebody just wants to make money off of you is a really hard thing to realize sorry about that I got cut off but what I was saying was that it's a really hard thing to realize that people don't care they just really just want to make a quick buck and there's really nothing you can do about it um, so learning how to draft things like concert writers which you hate doing because you feel like you're just being ridiculous when you make all of these statements that you require a venue to do but and it it's like common sense like don't unplug our tube amps when they haven't cooled down already because you will break them things like that that you think people would know but they honestly just don't and things like if you tell us you're gonna pay us you should pay us because you told us you would but get it in writing is what I learned um, because there's a lot of people that just like to promise that there's gonna be all these people here and we're gonna pay you so much money and then you get there and they say well no one showed up so we're not gonna pay you and it's like well I just drove a hundred miles with four cars and that's a lot of gas um, which brings me to my next point don't quit your day job because the next thing I learned was it is extremely expensive to be in a band and especially to be a college student in a band because college is expensive and handling your budgeting and your finances I have run out of money very quickly because we drove to a show that was in Ohio and then back and then to another show that was you know Fort Wayne and back and it's a lot of gas money and when you don't get paid for shows it comes straight out of your pocket and not to mention that equipment is extremely expensive and yes I'm a vocalist so I get off kind of easy because I have the least amount of equipment of all of my boys and I can tell you that decent sounding equipment does not come cheap and that is you know we always constantly want to be upgrading our equipment because we want the best live sound that we could get but when you realize that 
you know, buying a Mesa amp is extremely expensive, like $1,000 or something like that, and I know that my Aaron's guitars are, just the two of them are like $1,000 together, or like $1,100, I think, like, it's just really, really expensive, so if you think that you're just gonna quit everything and be in a band, it's not gonna last, because you have to live realistically, and when people don't want to pay you, it, it's just, no, you need a day job, like, do not, until you are making thousands of dollars off of selling records, don't quit your job, because it's just not worth it. Um, you can do what you love and work and do a bunch of other things like I do way too much stuff but I can attest to the fact that I put so much into this band and I still go to school full-time and I still work and you music is a great thing in that retrospect that you can do other things it does it's very time-consuming and Sometimes I wear holidays because I'm playing show for New Year's or something like that and I miss out on family time and things like that, but that's the sacrifices you make to do something that you love. And uh, hopefully your family is understanding about it. Mine are typically fairly understanding and that's really good because I'd be really sad if I couldn't do this. Um, but yeah, I'm going to run out of memory soon. but. These are just some things that I've learned in my three years of being in a band. It's very different from doing a solo career, but in some retrospects, it's kind of the same when you start pursuing your music career. And that's not to say that all people in the music business are mean and nasty and try and take advantage of you, because that is a very bad stereotype that sometimes the music industry gets. But uh, there are so many fantastic people that are so generous and just keep giving. Um, A1 Ministries is one of our favorite organizations to work with because they get it. They understand that being in a band costs so much money and, you know, we're on the road a lot. And it, when you sleep in your van and when you you know, maybe don't get to shower for four or five days at a time, and everyone smells, and everyone's exhausted, and like, yakking at each other, and you know, you, I love everybody in my band, but I am not a morning person, and I am very cranky when I'm hungry, and I'm hard to deal with, I will admit that, so it's, it's hard, but when you go there, they treat you like family, and they just are unbelievably gracious to every band that's ever played a show with them and they have the best food that I have ever had at a show so I always love playing shows with them and we're very grateful for people like them who understand and want to make our dream happen um, with us and care about us as people and not just as a way to make money or you know they, they believe in our message more than you know, who comes out making a profit at the end, and that's so important, and I think that music is a very powerful thing that can really help you bring a message across, but there are so many people who miss that fact and get so corrupt by the money aspect. But, 